Another mailbag for you today. First out of the package, a whole bunch of stuff. We've got some nifty little solder mask. This is UV curable solder mask. Comes in a syringe style dispenser. These are the same uh, that you get solder flux in pretty much. And I also got a UV flashlight to cure it with. So if we have to do some, some patching up on circuit boards and repairing a traces and stuff, we can just put this back on to insulate it and cure it with the flashlight, in theory. Also, we got what looks like Arduino Nanos. I was actually running a little low. I have put a lot of Nanos into service in various projects over the last little while. And you can't have too many of these. It's a wonderful little microcontroller, the Atmega 328. It's just a great little chip because USB on board, no fiddling with uh, USB to serial adapters or anything. So next up, this is the StreamBot 2-in-1 Bluetooth receiver and transmitter. Now what I'm going to use this for is for our Raspberry Pi, our RetroPie and Kodi streaming station to be able to stream from the HDMI adapter out to my Bluetooth headset so I don't have to have the big stereo. If you haven't if you haven't seen the video, if it hasn't gone live yet, you will. You'll see the size of my subs and, and <laughs> tower speakers. I don't always want those on when I'm playing games, so we'll use this to go to a Bluetooth headset. Handy dandy. Next up, also for the RetroPie project, if you haven't seen this already on a different video, this is a fanned Raspberry Pi case. Case with cooler, basically. It comes with power supply. I'll show this in its own video. Actually, I might do a little review on this just to see because the price is really reasonable. And I think it'll do the job for cooling our, our RetroPie system and kind of home entertainment system. So we'll give it a go. Next up, I believe, I think I know what this is. I think this should be a very cool re repair kit for remote controls. And it is. These are conductive pads that you can stick on to replace the backside of, of your buttons on your remote controls that have gone defective. Instead of that, you can people have painted on like just graphite from a pencil and there's different conductive paint that you can apply, which is ridiculously expensive. This little assortment is quite a bit cheaper and has pads for it looks like all kinds of different sizes of remote control pads. So I actually, my uh, Yamaha receiver, uh, it has defective pads on two of the remote control connections. So we're going to give this a go. I think this will work good. Next up, two quad rotor frames. These are the QAV210. It's just a 210 style quad frame, dirt cheap from online sources. These are the ones that you saw me fly and I did a frame dip on one of them. Pretty cool, turned out awesome. Actually two of them, we still have to finish the Project Blue Falcon version of it, which is my latest one. But two spares because sometimes I do break the top plate. The 210 is just an awesome little quadcopter. Just more DHT11s. I have no idea why I order these. I have tons of them. So just more. Are these DH22s or DHT11s? These are 11s. So just a cheap temperature and humidity sensor. Yes, those are people are going to comment down below that there's all kinds of better ones out there. These are cheap and they work. Next up, some proto boards. Now, with the advent of cheap circuit boards these days from... Uh, board houses in China most people are skipping this step truthfully but sometimes I don't want to if it's a one-off I don't want to have to fab a custom board uh, even though it's only two dollars but these are handy for just fabricating just transferring from the breadboard over to a PCB over to a, a actual circuit board solder it up done deal it's durable a lot more durable and leaving things on the breadboard and less complicated than going to a board house so handy dandy next up we got more goodies these look like some people call them pry tools some people call them spudgers just good quality metal prying devices for getting into 
phone and laptop cases. Different, this is just a basically a pointy stick. And this is actually a pretty neat one. It's got a nice flat like butter knife type feel to it and then a little bit wider on the other end. So I think that'll do the job. There's some sometimes where you just need something a little bit more robust than the plastic ones. So I think these metal ones will be good. One more for the RetroPie project. This is a replica N64 controller, USB style. Not a really long cord on it. It's not Bluetooth. There's only one manufacturer I could find that was making a Bluetooth version of this, but we'll take it as USB because sometimes I'm not a big gamer, but it makes it a lot different. It makes it a lot more uh, uh, nostalgic or even usable when you stick to the uh, the the controller that was came with the console. So for all intents and purposes, this should be accurate. The analog is pretty stiff though, but that might loosen up a little bit. We'll give it a go. And one last one for today. This is kind of random, a little bit different project. I wanted to see what we could do for an open source project for hearing aids and, and assistive uh, hearing devices. So I thought, what great, what better place to start than uh, like a $20 eBay special of these uh, hearing aids that they're selling. Rechargeable and battery based and everything. It's literally 20 bucks. So I know it's not going to be good and I know it's not a long term solution, but it might give us a jump off point to do something like bridge the gap between these $20 ones and the $10,000 ones. So um, just another silly project that maybe we'll put in the background. That's it for today, guys. Good luck in all your electronics projects. Click a thumbs up if you like this video. I will see you next week.